Hey there, Pisces. Welcome to your weekly reading for the week of October 9th through the 15th. Thank you so very much for tuning in. So a few pointers with uh, discussion before we get started. First and foremost, please keep in mind that this is a general reading. Yes, so please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. Um, this is, you know, dated for the 9th through the 15th, but this is also somewhat timeless. So you could always come back and watch this later, see how it resonates for you. Also keep in mind that you can pay attention to the titles that will help you understand what may or may not resonate with you. Yes. So moving forward with the channel, um, I decided to focus on making my channel and the readings that I do for, for the collective here through sidereal astrology. Sidereal astrology deals with the, 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 the constellations as they really are and where they really are within the sky. Um, so that means that, uh, you know, the degree system um, <clears throat> from compared to like tropical will be about 20 or so, 22 or 23, something like that degrees back. Okay. So um, in case in point, in tropical ast astrology, I am a Taurus sun, but in sidereal astrology, I am an Aries sun. Um, and this is something that I've decided to do because I've been working with, I've been kind of you know, focusing on this for a while and seeing how things resonate for me and re things resonate for me, quite frankly, m much stronger through sidereal than it does in tropical. Now, that does not mean to say that anybody out there that is still working with the tropical system is wrong or inaccurate in any way. I mean, there are plenty of people out there that are really talented astrologers and readers and they work with the tropical system and that's great. That works for them. For me, however, I find that I resonate more with my sidereal signs and so I would like to stick with that and I would like to base the channel off of that. Next thing that I want to mention is these readings, these weekly readings are going to be geared mainly towards your rising sign. Yes, in case in point, my rising is Leo. I am very much a Leo rising, like to the T, um, but also I've noticed that as I've been going through the situation, watching readings for myself and whatnot, whatever, and, and focusing from my rising sign from the type sidereal point of view, things resonate way more for me from that point of view. So this is again why I'm focusing my channel in this way because I have had positive experience with this moving forward or as I've been working in this capacity, yes? Now, you can watch for your sun and your moon or any other placement that would be, say, in this case, uh, I'm sorry, Pisces, but I'm mainly going to be gearing this towards Pisces rising or any other sign, Taurus rising in the Taurus video, Libra rising in the Libra video. But again, use your own discretion. Go with what resonates with you. I'm just speaking to how I'm basing this, but this is a general reading. We basically have all signs within us, so anything can really resonate. But use your own judgment, your own discretion, your own discernment, and pick out what fits best for you. All right, Pisces. So with that said, let's get going here and see what we have for your week. Hi, Spirit. Please make me a clear channel for all Pisces rising. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for the week of October 9th through the 15th of 2020. Thank you so much, Spirit. All right, Pisces, let's get into this. So this reading was developed with a number of Oracle decks, Tarot and Lenormand. We're starting with the Energy Oracle. I'm going to give this five shuffles and we will see what your common theme is for this week, your general theme for this week. Yes? One. Two. Three. For my Pisces rising for the month for the week of October 9th through the 15th, 2020. Here we go. What is your central theme for this week, Pisces? Man holding a heart. 
Ooh, lovey lovey is in the air, is it not, Pisces? This could be you or this could be another person. But this, regardless of whoever this is, this would be the masculine side of the equation, whether you're a woman or not, uh, or a man, it doesn't matter, okay? Some of you could be working on balancing and healing and integrating your masculine energy. And, woo, and it seems that it's, <laughs> it's almost as if this masculine energy, whether it's within you or it's another person, they finally are growing a heart, huh? Oh, that's sweet. <laughs> all right, let's keep going here. I do want to get all the cards out before I really start channeling. Um, but next, we're going to look at what's crowning you, what's on your mind this week, what is your focus this week, yes? Three shuffles. One. Two. From a Pisces for the week of 9th through the 15th of October 2020. This is three. All right, Pisces, what is your focus this week? I just heard compassionate energy surrounds you at this time. I really do feel like this is the development of a masculine energy, whether this is with it, blah, 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 blah. whether this is within you or someone else external to you. What's on your mind? What's your focus, Pisces? Oh shoot, it's focus. Interesting. That's very interesting because I just did the uh, Libra reading, and that was their focus as well. Or, yeah, well, that was their focus as well. <laughs> All right, now let's look at. <laughs> <laughs> Let's look at what is grounding you, what is driving you, what is motivating you this week, yes? Yeah? Five shuffles from the Oracle of the Angels. One. Two. Oh, oh, oh. Let's try that again. Two. Three. What is driving you this week, Pisces? Here we go. Okay. This is very interesting, Pisces. This is a um, pretty similar already, except for the man holding a heart situation. This is kind of similar to the Libra reading, but what's grounding you, what's driving you here is positive intentions. So Libra, I feel like there is a shift happening within your focus, within your energetic field, whether this is you or someone else. Um, I do feel like this is a masculine energy. So this is either a man that resonates more with masculine energy, or this is a woman that is either that either resonates more with masculine energy or is working on balancing and integrating and healing their masculine energy. Even if you are someone that resonates more with masculine energy, whether you're a man or a woman, you could also be in this energy of balancing and harmonizing and untwisting your masculine, your masculine side. And what I'm getting so far, I mean, we don't have everything yet. I am going to get into the tarot, tarot here to pull your two timelines here or potential timelines, potential points of view or whatever. Um, but I feel like someone is starting to really focus on what really matters. And I just heard intention is everything. I feel like there's an energy for you, Pisces, in which you're starting to come to terms with how, just how powerful your intention is. And I feel like your intention is shifting to more of a heart focus rather than an ego consciousness focus. I'm gonna give the tarot five shuffles and we're gonna pull your two timelines here. One. card here Pisces this is four they're saying that's going with your common denominator all right cool Whoop. and this is five all right Pisces let's cut the deck here Let's see what we've got. So overall energy, 
Well, no, oh, sorry, God, I did, I'm so on autopilot. I did that, I did that on the Libra reading too. Okay, uh, first timeline, timeline A, you have the Five of Cups, the Six of Swords, okay, and the Four of Cups, interesting. Timeline B, Temperance, the Page of Swords, and the World. Common denominator is the Four of Swords coupled with the Ace of Wands. All right, at the bottom of the deck is the Empress. You have the Empress at the bottom of the deck to the Queen of Swords. Ooh, wow, to the Queen of Pentacles, to the Knight of Cups. And finally, the Three of Pentacles is at the bottom of the deck here. All right, Pisces, let's talk about this. First in your, uh, the first timeline, timeline A, you have the Five of Cups, you have the Six of Swords, and you have the Four of Cups. And to me, this is giving off an energy of past circumstances. This is things that you went through in the past that you were constantly recreating over and over again. Something would disappoint you, would hurt you, would leave you feeling left out, slighted, maybe even sabotaged or backstabbed. And thus, there was an energy of, you know what? Screw it, I'm done with this, and I'm not accepting any other offers. There's a song that's coming to mind for me right now. It's um, Through With Love by Destiny's Child. And it's type. It's a type of energy where it's like, even if this doesn't represent, even if this isn't love for you, it could very well be. But even if it's not love or like a, like a relationship oriented, something in the past would disappoint you. Or something in the past has disappointed you consistently maybe, and that's gotten you to the point where you're like, screw it, I'm not accepting anything else any longer, or I'm not doing this ever again, or it's that type of energy, like I'm uh, screw love, I'm done with love, blah, 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 I'm never letting it back in. That was the past energy for some of you. For others of you, this is the what you're facing here. You're facing, like you've finally gotten to the point where it's like, you know what, I'm about to like, I'm about to just dump all of this right now because I can't deal with this any longer. Path B, you have Temperance with the Page of Swords and the World. So this is a much more ideal pathway for you, Pisces. It really does feel like you have two options here. You could take the high road or you could take the low road. Interestingly enough, the, the high road is at the bottom here, but that's okay. It doesn't matter. It's all symbolic. But temperance is bringing you a sense of balance and peace and understanding with the Page of Swords. Okay? Seeking to understand through strike, striking a balance or finding a balance within yourself. Re-alchemizing. Taking the elements of what you find around you and reshaping them or re-understanding them in a way so that you can bring this cycle to a close the world. But Pisces, it really all depends on what you want to focus on. Okay? Do you want to focus on the negativity and the strife? Or do you want to refocus, change the way you see the situation, and try to bring out the value in it so that you can learn from it, understand it better, and close out the cycle? Where you need to be rooted and grounded in positive intentions right now. Focusing on positivity, focusing on the positive aspects of the situation, even if it was a tough situation, even if it was hurtful, there's still something to be learned in it. Common denominator here is the Four of Swords and the Ace of Wands. Four of Swords, Ace of Wands. And connected to that, and this is how, this is the common, not, common denominator here. So this is how these two pathways or these two ways of thinking, the whatever you want to call it, this, this is how these two are connected. And they're connected by the Six of Swords or the Page of Swords, well, and, or the Page of Swords. So you can either just move on and keep perpetuating this cycle, or you can investigate and see clearly, truly what's going on here. Okay, makes sense? Now your overall energy is the Empress, to the Queen of Swords, to the Queen of Pentacles, to the Knight of Cups. And what I want to say here for you, Pisces, is focus more 
on what truly has value, Queen of Pentacles. Focus, see now, the interesting thing about this is I see the Queen of Swords and the Queen of Pentacles as like kind of like best friends because they're very similar in energy. They're very, very intellectual, very intelligent, and neither one of them has the patience for having their time wasted. However, the Queen of Pentacles is, is I would say, quite significantly more <laughs> compassionate than the Queen of Swords because the Queen of Swords ain't trying to deal with emotions in any sort of way. Whereas the Queen of Pentacles is like kind of like the wife and mother archetype, so she's got to have compassion there, right? But don't waste her time. So I see these two energies as coming together to discuss what truly matters here. What, is tr what truly has value to you here? It could even be a situation in which you are looking to understand your own value, what you bring to the table. Thus, we have the Three of Pentacles at the bottom of the deck here, which is a card of self-mastery. Okay? Moving forward with the Knight of Cups here. Taking the purest forms of yourself or the elements that or aspects of the situation that you're dealing with and moving forward with those. Right? All right. Let's get some clarification with Lenormand here. Five shuffles then. One. One. Oh, geez. <laughs> Sorry, Pisces. Hold on a second. Let me adjust my table here. Okay. All right. One. Two. Three. Pisces. We're going to start with the Four of Swords and the Ace of Wands. And what, I, what, I, what I'm hearing with this, Pisces, is really think about what is motivating you here. Like, before you take action, stop to think about it for a second. Four of Swords to the Ace of Wands. I'm sorry. Two lips. Love. Love should be your driving force here. Tulips are a gift, an offering of love. I'm hearing sacrifice. Some of you may need to sacrifice some sort of bachelor or bachelorette attitude or lifestyle. That's interesting. Let's get one more pull on that, please. For the tulips. Ah, mice though, rodents, pestilence. This could really be a love-oriented situation, and I feel like, um, either you've been avoiding love, or you there have been love situations in which you've allowed someone or something to get in and just kind of like corrupt the situation. I'm kind of getting an energy of not really paying attention to the red flags. And that's what would hurt you, which is interesting, Pisces, because I did your love reading over on Patreon for this month, and it was titled, Just Pay Attention to the Red Flags. If you're not on Patreon yet, I, I highly recommend that you do so. I do monthly love readings for all the signs. $5 a month, you get love, monthly love readings for all signs. You get access to all of the signs and all of the previous videos. If you want to do the top tier, which at this moment is $7, that's probably going to increase in the near future. Um, but if you want to do the top tier, you get everything. Check it out. Okay, so with that said then, Pisces, let's look at this. Five of Cups up here. Yeah, the Wishing Well and... Ooh, the Wishing Well and the Whip. And, all of, and these both fell on focus. <sighs> Pisces, uh, you're going to have to whip yourself into shape. Here. Oh, uh, hold on, please. I will be right back. Sorry about that, Pisces. Okay, so what we were saying here, you're going to have to whip yourself into shape. There's a dream that you have, that you want, and I feel like this is love, okay? And I feel like you're getting into the energy where you can start to do that because you do have this man holding a heart. So I feel like there's evolution here that's happening. There's growth, there's change that's coming, and that's beautiful. 
okay? But with the wishing well, it, even if this is just a water well, right? You gotta get water. But in order for you to get the water out of the well, you gotta go over there, you gotta crank, you gotta drop the bucket down, and then you gotta crank it back up so you can get the water. You have to do something about it with the whip. Whip yourself into shape. I really feel like Pisces, this is an energy of like having to really tell yourselves the hard truths. Because remember, these two cards fell on focus. So the question here for you this week, Pisces, what are you focused on? Are you focused on the sorrow, the despair, what you have lost? Or are you going to focus more on what you could gain? Because keep in mind, this Five of Cups energy is not all is lost here, right? Three cups may have spilled, yes, but quite frankly, those are cups that you didn't need anyway. You still have two behind you, okay? Let's look at the Six of Swords. Six of Swords, please, from a Pisces. There it is. There it is, there it is, there it is. The fish, interesting. Four of Cups. The Anchor. <laughs> okay, Pisces, look at this. Look at this. So you do get prosperity. You do get wish fulfillment. You do get abundance by leaving something behind. Six of Swords, moving on, okay? But instead of just pouring things out, you've got to stay, stay where you are. The more that you keep pouring things out, and refusing to try again, refusing to learn a lesson even, the more you anchor yourself into this energy. This is so weird and confusing, Pisces, but like, sure, you get value, you have potential to get value and abundance and what it is you truly desire when you move forward. But then in moving forward, don't allow yourself to get stuck in these energies of despair, four of cups, of doubt, of boredom. Because that's just going to anchor you further into this negativity. All right. Let's look at temperance here. Ah, the owls. Higher wisdom. Higher wisdom. Page of Swords. Ooh, that's a lot. And then the world. Yep. Okay. Uh, okay, at the bottom of the deck, you do have the mountain. So this is the, this is the road less traveled. This is uh, an uphill battle. This is, but also this is actually like doing the work and climbing the mountain so that you can see from this higher perspective. Now, the page of swords is here. Okay, and to, that's what's speaking to understanding, seeking understanding, finding the truth and finding the wisdom in the situation. You have the child, the clock, the ring, the book, and the house. So, Pisces, I feel like your troubles in love, commitment and compassion, any one of those three, maybe all three. But your troubles here stem from your childhood. Your troubles here stem from a broken commitment. Whether that be like your parents, maybe they got divorced or whatever when you were a child. Maybe you were abandoned as a child. Something from the past, something from your childhood that has affected your stability with the house. But I also feel like the house is representing your family dynamic. The commitment in your family dynamic. Something from your childhood. And this is, this, is, this, this is a cycle that's been going over and over again. The clock has just been ticking and ticking and ticking away. But that, that, I really feel like you should investigate. Look at those avenues somehow. Whether this is from your childhood, whether this be from your parents or other family members that you perceive to have broken a commitment either to themselves as, you know, uh, spouses or to you. I feel like maybe you have a misconceived notion of a broken commitment. Um, when like your parents divorced, you felt like the house or the home or the family was broken. 
um, and you didn't quite understand why that happened. Uh, but there's an understanding that you would need to come to in terms of the fact that if like your parents aren't happy, then them staying together is actually going to show you, send you the wrong message. And this is something that I say to parents at this point, like I don't have children, but I know that if I did have a child and I was in an unhappy, toxic relationship, I would not want to stay in that relationship with that individual. That doesn't mean I'm going to abandon my child. I'm still going to be there for my child, but I would want to show my child that it is better to be happy than to stay in a commitment in which you're not happy and it's toxic. Now, maybe this is a situation in which your parents got divorced and one or both of them abandoned you, abandoned the rest of the family, did not keep up their, their agreement to be a father or mother to you. Well, uh, that's a little different, okay? But whatever this is for you here, you really gotta look into this, you really gotta investigate, you really gotta understand so that you can close the chapter, close the book on this and start writing anew. The world has card number 38, which is an 11, the bridge. Getting you from one place to another. Hopefully, potentially, this is a much happier place, right? Crossing that bridge, finally, for yourself. Not for anyone else, for yourself, Pisces. Cross that bridge. It's gonna be work, I understand that. It's gonna be challenging, the whip. But anything that is worth getting, Pisces, is not going to be easy. It's just the way it is. All right, I'm gonna leave it there. Thank you so much, Pisces. I really hope this was helpful for you. I love you all so very much. I look forward to connecting with you again for our next meeting for the next week. Yes? Take care. Mwah! Bye!